today I'm going to finish off the uh, 15 part uh, by memory inspired series sponsored by the Irish Arts Centre in New York City with a, a duo with my great friend and musical companion of many, many years and decades indeed, Billy McComiskey. And Billy's from Brooklyn originally, he lives in, in, in Baltimore. Marlon now has done so for the longest time. Going to be playing my, uh, I have a few banjos, but one of my favorites is this beautiful old Vega banjo. You can see the, the lovely work on it here. Uh, and it's really a work of art as much as a musical instrument uh, made by the Vega Company. Probably Dan Neely tells me, a fellow banjo driver, in 1923. But in any case, it's older than myself. Uh, that's saying something. Um, and the banjo accordion duo has always appealed to me. Now, I started playing the banjo when I heard Christy Dunn, a member of the Dunn Brothers, playing in the streets of Limerick when I was growing up. Uh, and I heard it, uh, the wild sound of it in the 1950s and was, was attracted to it without knowing really why. And uh, I felt that at some point in the future uh, that I was going to end up being a banjo driver, as, as they're called in Ireland. Uh, and, and so I have. And then I was influenced a lot later on by hearing on the radio Barney McKenna, uh, the great uh, banjo player. He played with the Dubliners for, for many decades. And uh, he's the, the one who really put on the map the whole idea of tuning the banjo an octave below a fiddle, GDA an octave below a fiddle, and, and, and thereby making all the wonderful tunes composed by fiddle players over the centuries available to the left hand of the banjo, played of course uh, by, by the pick and the right hand, although Christy Dunn, when I heard him play in Limerick, he played with the thimble as did Maggie Barry, the only woman banjo player of that, of that era. She played the five-string banjo. Uh, the banjo, of course, originally is an African instrument and uh, various versions of it exist today, like the Nguni and the Akante. Uh, but uh, that idea, not the literal instrument, the slaves carried nothing, uh, was carried to the Caribbean and the southern uh, plantations. And there the instrument evolved into the gourd banjo and eventually into the banjo that we know today, appropriated by a, a lot of Irish Americans indeed in minstrelsy, which is a whole other story. But it made a way in, into Irish music in the early 20th century, and the person I associate most with that is, is Mike Flanagan of the Flanagan Brothers in Waterford, and I had the great pleasure of meeting Mike uh, starting in 1977, and became acquainted with this wonderful banjo player who really, he says he was the very first person to play Irish jigs and reels on the banjo. And he, 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 you know, that's the way he saw it. There was another player called John Wheeler around at the same time. I don't know if they ever met, but Mike was certainly the one who put the banjo on the map in Irish music by his virtuosic playing. He played with his brother Joe, the banjo and accordion duo. It was very central to Irish music in the dance halls of New York. And uh, there were many, many dance halls. It was a very important social institution for the immigrants. That's where they met one another and choose their, their uh, future marriage partners most likely. And the banjo and accordion was perfect at a time when there were no microphones. Microphones weren't invented really until 1925. And before that, it was an acoustic sound on the banjo uh, and the accordion and the piano became the central instrument in playing music that was loud enough for the dancers to hear. Well, the banjo and accordion is now a fairly common combo in Irish music. I remember when I went to London in the 1960s hearing Raymond Rowland uh, there, the great accordion player, and, and, uh, and Liam Farrell, uh, the fine banjo player from County Tyrone. And I've met so many banjo players over the years, fine banjo players in London and elsewhere. I don't even want to mention all their names because they'll probably leave somebody out and annoy somebody. But in any case, the banjo and accordion uh, are now a, a central combo in Irish music. I played with James Keane, the great accordion player from Dublin a lot before I left Dublin. I was learning my trade at that point, and James was very involved in that. Uh, and in America, I played with great uh, accordion players, one great piano accordion player, Jimmy Keane from Chicago, and we're still at it. Uh, and many over the years, uh, Raymond uh, Rowland was the person that I really admired in London. Then I met Martin Mulhair, well, the late Martin Mulhair when I came to America. And of course, uh, met up with, with James Keane, who emigrated to America a little before I did. But mostly over the years, I played with Billy McComiskey. Uh, and uh, Billy has a, a lovely, uh, wild style of playing. He can tailor it to be very, uh, very mute when, when, when the occasion demands for it. Uh, and he's the consummate ensemble musician is the greatest man I think I've come across over the years at leading a session in America that I've ever come across but anyway I'm delighted to to finish our series uh, with a couple of um, 
a couple of tunes, actually three tunes, uh, and they're three great reels. The, the first is called Crowley's Number One, associated with Michael Coleman, the great Sligo fiddle player in America. And the second uh, tune I learned from Paddy Kiluri and Michael Russell, two great musicians uh, from the Doolan area of player. Uh, Paddy Kiluri was the fiddle player, Michael Russell, a legendary whistle and flute player, and it's called The Road to Lister and Varna. And the third tune is called The Providence Reel, very much associated with Irish music in America. And playing with Billy and myself will be the great piano player from the Baltimore area, Matt McQueen.